BMW are one of the world's biggest car companies, bringing in a revenue of over $94 billion in 2016. But they also make some of the most exciting cars on the market, which they call the ultimate driving machines like the brilliant M2 and i8. Before I go off on a tangent, let's just segue right into 10 things you should know about BMW. During World War I, a little company called Rat Motor merged with Otto Work, an aeroplane maker just up the street in Munich. Otto Work was run by the son of the guy who made four-stroke engines usable, which ultimately contributed to just about every car engine on the road. That same technology went directly into the engine that legendary fighter pilot, the Red Baron, called the greatest engine in World War I. Whilst the highest performing BMWs in the past few decades tend to rely on six cylinders, so much of BMW's legacy revolves around outstanding four-cylinder engines that in the 1960s, an Austrian architecture professor designed BMW's Global HQ to pay tribute to the four bank. Aside from plenty of records for speed, and even helping an airboat circumnavigate the globe back in 32, this BMW-powered biplane hit 32,000 feet in 1919. It was easily a record back then, and that's roughly the altitude you cruise at today, a hundred years later. The roundel is a tribute to both Rat Motor and Bavaria. That blue and white, those are the national colours of the German state of Bavaria, not white propellers on a blue sky or whatever you've heard, Rat Motor was one of the key companies on which, excuse the most likely abortion of pronunciation, bearish flugs work <laughs> was founded. And when BFW became BMW in 1917, the round door was a combination of Rat's logo and the Bavarian colors. After its second place finish in World War I, Germany was prohibited from producing warplanes and warplane engines as mandated by the Treaty of Versailles. Enter the BMW Dixie 315. It was a hit. The Dixie was actually an English Austin. In America, Bantam built the same car. In Japan, it was a Datsun. Austin designed and built the chassis to be used under license around the world, and companies jumped the chance to avoid development costs. This motorbike is pretty much a death trap. Really, how would you even get off in an emergency without decapitating yourself in the process? But it was aerodynamically slick and supercharged. In 1937, this thing was capable of 173 miles an hour. But again, bodywork covered the rider. Wouldn't that make it a two-wheeled car? By 1959, BMW was nearing bankruptcy. Here's a hint, the Cold War. Smelling blood, and probably cash too, Mercedes' parent company, Daimler-Benz, mounted a hostile takeover attempt. It got spicy. Collectively, BMW shareholders said, fuck that noise, an approximate translation from the German, and mounted a counterattack. Even the mechanics helped buy back shares. Eventually, a man by the name of Quant took control. His family still owns a large chunk of the company even today. BMW and Lambo agreed in the 70s to build a race car. But just when they were about to finish, Lamborghini pulled out in one of the biggest that's what she said moments in corporate history. BMW cleaned itself off, went back to Germany, had private coach builder Bauer handle Lamborghini's part, and the original M car was born. BMW's M10 four-cylinder engine was an evolution of a motor that first hit the streets in 62 with 75 horsepower. By 83, engineers had managed to squeeze out over 1,400 horsepower from it, heavily modified but still based on that same original motor. And Nelson Piquet won the World Drivers' Championship with it. If you're planning on racing your classic 3 to 8, presumably with a top hat and monocle, you can still buy brand new transmission for it via the BMW Classic program. 
To build the parts, BMW bought back its old motorcycle factory in Munich. It's kind of poetic if you think about it, they're going to make a ton of new old parts for BMW Classic inside a classic BMW building. And that about wraps up 10 things you should know about BMW. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to like it. We've got plenty more where that came from on its way, so don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned for more. And head over to our website, gawkmotors.co.uk, for truckloads more content. Seriously, I've been hard at work there. So thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you this time next week.